very interesting topic which is understood in a very simple way that is gel electrophoresis. I know the name suggests very much uh, physics type but it is all about uh, biological science and molecular biology and genetics. When a sample comes to reach us that is a sample where there is a mixture of proteins and we need to uh, isolate and on the basis of molecular weight, molecular charge, uh, sorry charge in the, on the basis of size then we need to have a second thought for it how to do it. This technique gel electrophoresis is used in forensic laboratory and in DNA fingerprinting. So once you understand this lesson all other lessons on southern blot and DNA fingerprinting will be absolutely crystal clear for you. So let's go ahead this lesson let me write this word for you this is all about gel electrophoresis when it comes to mind I think you all must be curiously waiting this is a very big name I can see that it's crossing this small board also gel electrophoresis what gel are we talking about for uh, DNA gel electrophoresis there is a particular method that is followed I have revealed the secret for you only uh, let me just go back a little bit it's not today's topic is DNA gel electrophoresis but if you have a mixture of proteins and there are different sizes different molecular charge molecular size is different positives negative in case of protein positive charge negative charge hydrophobic hydrophilic molecules are there so in that case for protein for protein gel electrophoresis I am not writing this big word anymore for protein gel electrophoresis it is the polyacrylamide that is used that means the polymer of acrylamide molecules will be used for separation of the protein molecules in that case protein molecules which are varying in sizes in uh, charge which can be positive negative hydrophobic away from water hydrophilic towards the water so in that case it will be polyacrylamide why polyacrylamide why not uh, agarose that can be done in a different lesson today's lesson is basically for DNA now comes the DNA gel electrophoresis what gel will be used in case of DNA it is the agarose gel agarose is coming the source is from uh, seaweed and we get it agarose agarose gel electrophoresis we know polymers are actually the chain or a network we prepare from the smaller units that is the monomers joined together and in case of DNA it is the agarose gel will be used for DNA gel electrophoresis and this has a very big importance in forensic science in DNA fingerprinting to understand DNA fingerprinting the first basic lesson I would say is first you go and see first of all PCR chain reaction polymerase chain reaction if you have not watched the video on it please go and watch it I have prepared it for you though it was very having a very poor audio quality so you have something to support your audio system I was also soft over there so it all went like that but you can understand the lesson and the next will be after PCR after polymerase chain reaction comes the gel electrophoresis after gel electrophoresis comes another lesson that is the southern blot and then after that you go for DNA fingerprinting so let's start with uh, DNA gel electrophoresis DNA the structure let me draw the structure for you it's a double helical structure we all know double helical structure as you can see it's having two helices and in this case you will find the nucleotides that is adenine thy thymine cytosine guanine these are the nucleotides ATGC we say in short form and these are joined by the hydrogen bonds this is our central dogma and we know this 
this is nothing new for us to understand. If this is a left handed one in Watson and Crick model this is the B DNA. So, it is a left handed one. So, in this case uh, this is that it is a double helical structure this is a left handed uh, setting I am showing you there are other types of DNA also uh, which DNA has got a right handed uh, rotation that also I can cover it in a different lesson A DNA, Z DNA, B DNA, C DNA I can do that in some other video lecture. Today let us talk about the DNA gel electrophoresis for protein is the polyacrylamide which is the um, solution that is used for the separation of protein molecules as the protein molecules have different molecular charge at the same time the size is also different. In case of DNA the size is only the factor. It is only the factor of the size that can help you to understand or segregate the DNA strands on the basis of their length is the size. And one more thing that I need to keep you a constant reminder should be given that uh, the backbone in DNA gel electrophoresis, the DNA structure, the backbone is sugar phosphate backbone, the nucleotides are joined by the phosphodiester bonds are there, the hydrogen bonds are present and joining the nucleotides and uh, this sugar phosphate backbone, it is totally a negative charge we find in DNA, it is all the negative charge we are talking about. So, on the basis of size that is the length of the strand we can segregate them, we can separate them and this with the help of electric field we will do it because the negative it is all DNA whole structure is negative. So, negative molecules have to move from cathode to anode that is from negative end to the positive end the anode is the positive end and how we are going to do it with the help of this method of uh, DNA gel electrophoresis. The gel that we are going to use is agarose gel. So, now comes how to do it, how we will do it. Let us see how the technique is applied. Let me show you by a, with the help of a drawing because it is the drawing which can help us understand. I am going to use the blue one or black one better so that you can understand. This is a chamber. I hope you are able to see this chamber is going to first have a buffer solution. Why the buffer solution is meant, uh, present? The buffer solution will be able to keep the particular pH of the agarose gel and the chemical constituents relatively in a constant state. That means the pH will not change. We know a buffer solution is an is an aqueous solution which is a combination of a weak acid and a conjugated base. Buffer helps to maintain the pH. In this case for DNA gel electrophoresis the buffer that is used is a tris based buffer which is actually acetic acid and uh, inside the buffer solution we are going to have first of all the agarose gel and then the DNA to be loaded into it. May, uh, loaded into the wells. How we are going to do it? That is first goes the buffer into the chamber. This is the buffer region which is maintaining the pH. I hope you are able to understand the name of the buffer also tris based buffer though the question never comes on the which buffer is used but it comes what is the use of the buffer solution to maintain the pH relatively constant pH is maintained in the because if this pH of the whole content changes then the motive of this experiment will never be able to successful. Next comes agarose, agarose white powder like the source is seaweed white powder like again you have to make it into a solution with the help of buffer only and heat it to temperature say 40 degrees strictly applied for DNA gel electrophoresis it is, it is the agarose gel we are talking about. For proteins the story was different. For protein we had the polyacrylamide that was being used because there, there were many as, amino acids were present and these amino acids had different sizes, molecular charge, hydrophobic, hydrophilic and uh, um, polyacrylamide was, is always a better choice. For DNA as the sugar phosphate backbone is comprised of negative charge entire 
uh, structure of DNA is having negative charge. So that means the strand, first of all the strand can be differentiated on the basis of their size, length. So these are the two factors and as far as the size and length is concerned, the movement of the DNA strands will be from the negative to the positive end. So this will help us to understand, track the movement of the DNA. This is one thing from cathode to anode. So let's see how the process works. Let me draw this chamber for you. Always a drawing is required to understand the process. This is a chamber I have drawn and in this chamber I will load the agarose gel and then the DNA. Before I load that agarose gel I must have a buffer solution. This chamber will also be placed in a buffer. Why the buffer is used? So that you can maintain the pH of the solution. For maintenance of the pH we need a buffer and this case that is tris based buffer or acetic acid you can say is used as a buffer solution which maintains the pH. Buffer solution is that solution which is uh, helping us so that the relative pH is maintained otherwise the motto or the motive of our, ex of our experiment will never be understood and will fail also. The motive will fail how to track the movement. This is one thing. Agarose normal white powder that you find prepare it in a buffer only because water can ne never be a better choice in this case. Water will not have any condu conductance also. Buffer will help us in having a conductance as there will be salts in it. So definitely the movement of the fragments can be traced and it will help us. The pH will also be maintained, the chemical composition inside the whole chamber, having the agarose, having the DNA that also can be maintained. So on the whole buffer, we need a buffer always. Now I have used the chamber with a buffer. Now I have to load uh, first uh, put my, the agarose gel. As it has to be in a gel condition, agarose to be heated say 40 degree centigrade so that it become molten and then it will be put into this chamber. Before you put the buffer, sorry, before you put the agarose gel, use a comb. Usually there will be a comb that will be used. Now uh, that is used for this method. This method is a, a common practice that is used in forensic lab and DNA fingerprinting. You can uh, see it in the videos also how it is technically done. See the comb goes into the chamber. The comb will be going into the chamber in this way also then it is a horizontal setting sorry it is a vertical setting and if it is going in this way if, if the setting is in this way then it is a horizontal setting. So the setting can be horizontal or a vertical. So the comb goes into the chamber then the agarose gel goes into it in molten condition. When agarose is heated it is in molten condition then you can wait for some time cool it give a cooling uh, say it is brought first heated to 40 degrees it is molten again it is brought to 20 degrees or 10 degrees so it is in a uh, solidified stage and then the comb will be removed so that there are some wells that are created. Now these wells will help us to put our DNA into it. It is into these wells that is when you uh, what to say when you are putting the agarose when you are putting the agarose then what happens it is in molten condition. The comb is over here so it is in molten condition it goes into it and again when it solidifies you remove the comb and here are some electrodes that are present. If it is a horizontal setting as I have said from negative to positive movement will be from negative to positive. So if it is movement will be from negative to positive. The wells are prepared, the chamber agarose is put into it, it is in molten condition. Then the comb was earlier set and uh, then when it became solid we removed the comb. So the wells are prepared and into these wells we will load the DNA. So it is not in the chamber directly, it is into these wells we will load the DNA and the first well 
remember this is the first well in the first well the dna strand that we will take is going to be of the known length why it is a known length we will take because in this case we will understand by comparing this column with the other columns so when we will load into this this is uh, well 1 well 2 well 3 and well 4 so if if it is number 1 well is known to us then rest of it will be very easy for us to understand because that time we will be comparing and this is going to serve as our ladder the ladder is actually the first uh, column that we will have of the known length so this is going to act like a ruler that's all and here you can mark also that this is 100 base pair say this is 200 this is 300 this is 400 this is 500 so in this way you can mark it so this is going to be your ruler type of thing now we know that the negative and the positive dna helical structure is totally having the negative charge in it so if it is the setting is in this way vertical manner we know it, it is in vertical manner then it will be a vertical setting otherwise most of it generally we find the horizontal setting load the dna run the electric field now how long you are going to run the electric field that is also a matter if the electric field that you run is of a longer duration then what will happen all of the dna goes into it and it runs out you will not be able to track how far it has gone so the motive of the experiment will also fail now what happens is that when we load the dna into the chamber run the electric field we find that the dna molecules say for instance this is a horizontal setting i have got so dna will start moving from this end to this end negative to positive or if it is vertical then also it will be from cathode to anode as there are electrodes attached electrodes must be at attached to have the electric field running you must have electrode attached to it next comes when the dna moves usually what happens if the dna strand or the fragment is a shorter strand then what will happen it will go away farther away means from the source if this is the source and this is a horizontal then uh, vertical then it will move towards anode to this end i am taking a different color so that i can understand from this color say it will move to this but suppose the strand is quite a thick one then it will not be able to move too much it will be towards this end so you can understand by its movement suppose one strand moves to here so in this way by looking at the particular length or position rather you can track the movement of the dna fragment but dna at this stage is almost invisible it is very difficult for us to understand how far the movement has taken place so what we do is we switch off the electric field and then we notice that no the story is all in invisible for all of us so what do we do we can do one work that is we can have a pre-added dye any dye you can take why because this dye will move and you will be able to understand yes the dna strand has moved but this is unknown that it is only a dye moving my motive is to see a total pattern because forensic science is going to use this technique to find out the same sequence the same pattern so how do i find the same pattern if i am unable to understand the band the band is not by one strand of dna thread it will be many strands making one band that's a question mark strictly applied for dna gel electrophoresis it is it is the agarose gel we are talking about for proteins the story was different for protein we had the polyacrylamide that was being used because there there were many as amino acids were present and these amino acids had different sizes molecular charge hydrophobic hydrophilic and uh, um, polyacrylamide was, is always a better choice for dna as the sugar phosphate backbone is comprised of negative charge 
entire uh, structure of DNA is having negative charge. So that means the strand, first of all the strand can be differentiated on the basis of their size, length. So these are the two factors and as far as the size and length is concerned, the movement of the DNA strands will be from the negative to the positive end. So this will help us to understand, track the movement of the DNA. This is one thing from cathode to anode. So let's see how the process works. Let me draw this chamber for you. Always a drawing is required to understand the process. This is a chamber I have drawn and in this chamber I will load the agarose gel and then the DNA. Before I load that agarose gel I must have a buffer solution. This chamber will also be placed in a buffer. Why the buffer is used? So that you can maintain the pH of the solution. For maintenance of the pH we need a buffer and this case that is tris based buffer or acetic acid you can say is used as a buffer solution which maintains the pH. Buffer solution is that solution which is uh, helping us so that the relative pH is maintained otherwise the motto or the motive of our, ex of our experiment will never be understood and will fail also. The motive will fail how to track the movement. This is one thing. Agarose normal white powder that you find prepare it in a buffer only because water can ne never be a better choice in this case. Water will not have any condu conductance also. Buffer will help us in having a conductance as there will be salts in it. So definitely the movement of the fragments can be traced and it will help us. The pH will also be maintained, the chemical composition inside the whole chamber, having the agarose, having the DNA that also can be maintained. So on the whole buffer, we need a buffer always. Now uh, I have used the chamber with a buffer. Now I have to load, uh, first uh, put my, the agarose gel. As it has to be in a gel condition, agarose to be heated, say 40 degrees centigrade so that it become molten and then it will be put into this chamber. Before you put the buffer, sorry, before you put the agarose gel, use a comb. Usually there will be a comb that will be used. Now uh, that is used for this method. This method is a, a common practice that is used in forensic lab and DNA fingerprinting. You can uh, see it in the videos also how it is technically done. See the comb goes into the chamber. The comb will be going into the chamber in this way also then it is a horizontal setting sorry it is a vertical setting and if it is going in this way. If, if the setting is in this way, then it is a horizontal setting. So the setting can be horizontal or a vertical. So the comb goes into the chamber, then the agarose gel goes into it in molten condition. When agarose is heated, it is in molten condition. Then you can wait for some time, cool it, give a cooling, uh, say it is brought first heated to 40 degrees, it is molten, again it is brought to 20 degrees or 10 degrees, so it is in a uh, solidified stage and then the comb will be removed so that there are some wells that are created. Now these wells will help us to put our DNA into it. It is into these wells that is when you uh, what to say when you are putting the agarose when you are putting the agarose then what happens it is in molten condition. The comb is over here. So it is in molten condition, it goes into it and again when it solidifies you remove the comb. And here are some electrodes that are present. If it is a horizontal setting as I have said from negative to positive, movement will be from negative to positive. So if it is movement will be from negative to positive. The wells are prepared, the chamber agarose is put into it, it is in molten condition. Then the comb was earlier set and uh, then when it became solid we removed the comb. So the wells are prepared and into these wells we will load the DNA. So it is not in the chamber directly, it is into these wells 
we will load the DNA and the first well remember this is the first well in the first well the DNA strand that we will take is going to be of the known length why it is a known length we will take because in this case we will understand by comparing this column with the other columns so when we will load into this this is uh, well 1 well 2 well 3 and well 4 so if if it is number 1 well is known to us then rest of it will be very easy for us to understand because that time we will be comparing and this is going to serve as our ladder the ladder is actually the first uh, column that we will have of the known length so this is going to act like a ruler that's all and here you can mark also that this is 100 base pair say this is 200 this is 300 this is 400 this is 500 so in this way you can mark it so this is going to be your ruler type of thing now we know that the negative and the positive dna helical structure is totally having the negative charge in it so if it is the setting is in this way vertical manner we know it it is in vertical manner then it will be a vertical setting otherwise most of it generally we find a horizontal setting load the dna run the electric field now how long you are going to run the electric field that is also a matter if the electric field that you run is of a longer duration then what will happen all of the dna goes into it and it runs out you will not be able to track how far it has gone so the motive of the experiment will also fail now what happens is that when we load the dna into the chamber run the electric field we find that the dna molecules say for instance this is a horizontal setting i have got so dna will start moving from this end to this end negative to positive or if it is vertical then also it will be from cathode to anode as there are electrodes attached electrodes must be at attached to have the electric field running you must have electrode attached to it next comes when the dna moves usually what happens if the dna strand or the fragment is a shorter strand then what will happen it will go away farther away means from the source if this is the source and this is a horizontal then uh, uh, vertical then it will move towards anode to this end I am taking a different color so that I can understand from this color. Say it will move to this. But suppose the strand is quite a thick one. Then it will not be able to move too much. It will be towards this end. So you can understand by its movement. Suppose one strand moves to here. So in this way by looking at the particular length or position rather you can track the movement of the DNA fragment but DNA at this stage is almost invisible it is very difficult for us to understand how far the movement has taken place so what we do is we switch off the electric field and then we notice that no the story is all in invisible for all of us so what do we do we can do one work that is we can have a pre-added dye any dye you can take why because this dye will move and you will be able to understand yes the dna strand has moved but this is unknown that it is only a dye moving my motive is to see a total pattern because forensic science is going to use this technique to find out the same sequence the same pattern so how do i find the same pattern if i am unable to understand the band the band is not by one strand of dna thread it will be many strands making one band that's a question mark also a question in front of us when the chamber is ready having the buffer solution to maintain the ph again i load my first i put the agarose into it with the comb and then remove the comb uh, then the agarose hardens now I am loading the DNA running the electric field what really happens is DNA moves from negative to positive end from cathode to anode 
and when it moves the means the the unique part is as it moves through the agarose gel it creates a wonderful fascinating matrix means a net like structure we call it mesh and into these mesh there are some small pores agarose is a wonderful gel why because it creates a mesh and it is through this pore that the dna fragment will be moving so it it goes into the means agarose forms a mesh like structure or a network like structure having clean sized pores what will be the size of the pore will it remain constant it should remain constant it's only the dna fragment which will be passing through these pores and if the fragment is a long one definitely as i said if the depending on the size because that is the only factor here by which we can distinguish that if it is a shorter strand shorter fragment it will go farther away that means it runs easily through the pore and if it if it is a little bit thicker and and uh, a longer strand you can take the size if it is a bit longer then definitely it will take some time to move and the movement will also be slow and not very far away from the negative end that is one factor so pore size is also a matter here agarose concentration is also a matter remember if i need uh, if my sample the concentration of agarose what should be the concentration of agarose that also we need to keep in mind that is also depending because if a correct concentration is not maintained i will not be able to find out the result if my sample is a very small amount i need high concentration of agarose say 5 5 to 7% 10% but if the sample is quite a big one then a lesser percentage here also the question comes i will talk about it later but let me clear this point because you will be misled you will be getting lost that i have created uh, with the help of agarose this mesh like structure there there are pores through which the dna strand is running through and i have to track and i have tracked also with the help of a pre added dye but still my result is i am not getting the pattern pattern is a total band i am unable to see the band how do i see the band now what i do is i can open up the chamber switch of the electric field open up the chamber take out the agarose whole slab and then use ethidium bromide it ethidium bromide is an intercalating agent it can be used to bind with the hydrogen bonds with the dna molecule and therefore it is giving me a wholesome pattern a good pattern by which i can understand yes this is the place this is the type of pattern i am getting so getting to see the dna is not a easy task over here but i can achieve it with the help of this ethidium bromide because ethidium bromide is an intercalating agent which is binding with the dna molecule giving me a pattern and when exposed to uv light that is p32 we use it i'll be telling about this matter in my another video that i'll be making it for you for southern blot you will come to know about that radio uh, uh, active isotope p32 that is exposed to uv ray then it will show this band so here comes my solution that how i can get to see the band in gel electrophoresis this method is used first point that it is use of buffer why second point how and when i have loaded my dna third point on the basis of what i will be separating dna strands it is definitely through one only one factor that is the size the length now comes a, another point i talked about that is the concentration of agarose see dna has a molecular weight more than 1 dalton 1 million dalton so definitely if the molecular weight is so high very little amount is going to be used so in this case if i am going to go for polyacrylamide what will be the difficulty that for higher molecular weight polyacrylamide
can never has to be taken in such a little amount less in amount and in that less amount polyacrylamide can never solidify it will not become solid so what is the motive of this experiment will again not be achieved so that's why to maintain a particular concentration i need agarose because agarose is the best it will be able to create this mesh or the network and through which the the pores which are created through which will run my dna band which is having multiple strands multiple sized strands how to separate them i cannot see one strand i can use a pre added dye to track the movement but i cannot see the band to see the band i must have use of some what to say uh, intercalating agent which will bind to the dna molecule and then it will under exposure to uv light, uv light that is it will be able to see the exact band and from there you can see the position for here like this band it has gone to 100 base pairs this one has gone to 600 why because how i am able to know because i know the first well the first uh, what to say the column which is the known strand that's why i could compare it so this method is applied in forensic science in laboratory and in dna fingerprinting i hope you have understood the process about gel electrophoresis do revise the portion once more watch the video again and again so that you can understand and later on coming up is the southern blot without the knowledge of pcr gel electrophoresis that we have done today and southern blot you cannot understand dna fingerprinting thank you for being with